Hi, I'm Shivam. Hi, I'm Izzy. And this is Phoenix Chat. Where one of us can read. Which one? You, you find, find out. out. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Chat. And as a great philosopher once said, oh my god, we're back again. Yay! The <laughs> last time we uh, <laughs> tried to leave off there, I believe, um, yeah, Juliet tried to murder herself? Yeah, you know, it happens sometimes. It happens really sometimes. Like you know, um, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. The, the party got trapped in this weird um, dungeon after they like uh, got trapped in the, this blizzard that was like going to kill them if they went outside. So they decided to explore the cave, took them into this like uh, weird chamber. A um, bunch of weird fey undead creatures started to steal the party's faces. And uh, in the first room the party went to, fucking um, Juliet ran in and decided to try and murder herself. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Um, yeah. They also, uh, gained another party member afterwards, Alistair, who Alistair. all of them kind of remembered, but not really. Um, but yeah, no. Um, they all kind of realized that, like, uh, Alistair wasn't part of the party, and Alistair turned back into Boondock's dog, Frank. Frank! <laughs> oh my god. And then we <laughs> left that juliet room after we got a key from her dead corpse you know yeah normal mm -hmm. stuff yeah so i i like because uh i believe your assumption at this point was oh we're going to go into all of these rooms and then we're going to beat the shit out of her clones yes and That's... you know what happened i was like all right boondock is next i'm so ready to beat the shit out of boondock <laughs> yeah um so you guys got the key went out of the room uh placed the key in went back into the room with Boondock now leading the pack, as Essen kind of realized, like, oh, Juliet was the first person in the room, so that means it was the Juliet room. If Boondock goes in first, then that's probably Boondock's, uh, room. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Boondock heads inside, and as they get inside, it's just a room with a well and a crank. Um, and as they look uh, behind them, they realize that there's no exit to the room anymore. The only things inside of the well and crank. Um, so I believe uh, Juliet decides to walk over to the well, look down, and um, as she looks up, well. what? I also stuck my hand in there. Um, yeah, I think you did at some point. Um, as you looked up, though, there was the uh, fake boondock, um, and the I believe regular Boondock looked at fake Boondock and just like gave like a howdy with the tip of the hat and the fake Boondock did the same back. Yeah. I really like that moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um But fake Boondock then explains to the party just like uh yeah, um well, there's only like two rules here. We uh we don't look in the well and we don't try and take anything out of the well. Uh so the party's like, Okay, I guess we'll look around for anything else. I tell them, Well there's no. nothing else inside the room besides the well. And that's when and, um, <laughs> uh, Juliet decided to touch what was inside of the well. See, when and, you tell Juliet not mm -hmm. to do something, you know she's gonna fucking do it. Like, there's, there, you can't get around it. So what does she do? Oh, I'm gonna stick my hands into the well. Oh no, it's ouchy water. The water hurts. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was only just like, you immediately just like, immediately snap your hand back, realizing you're about to take a shit ton of damage if you uh, try to hop into that well. Um, and so uh, the fake boon deck's just looking at you, know, like, see, we just we don't look inside because everything's just bad in that well, so we just don't deal with it. Um, and the real boon deck just kind of like, well, I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> and then um, I was like, well, do you see any other way out of this? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I start to crank the thing. And what a mistake that was. Again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and as you start to like just kind of crank the, the well a little bit, um, what begins to happen is uh, as like uh, the, the bucket inside is raised up, um, the entire party can just hear the sounds of like gunfire and violence. 
Mountains. Um, and Boondock especially recognizes exactly what those sounds are because it's the exact same sounds of the gunfight just before his father died. Um, and so the real boondock is just like, okay, okay, we, we don't have to see what's in the well now. I understand what's going on here now. We, we don't got to do it. <laughs> yeah, it was awkward. We were like, oh, this is like bad. We don't get to beat mm. the shit out of boondock anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so um, at this point, like, uh, Essen is just like, uh, okay, I'm going to try and calm the, the boondocks down. And like, uh, you guys just keep like uh, turning the well. Um, and this is really lovely and touching moment with like Essen calming both boondocks down. Um, as you said, like, uh, the, if you keep wanting things to change, they won't. And focus on the here and now, and I'm right here beside you through all of it. Um, boondock basically just kind of panicking through the whole thing of the sounds of gunfire and violence as Morgan decides to crank the, the well. Um, but eventually the sounds die down. And uh, as Morgan pulls up the, the bucket, inside of the bucket, there is a black key. And as Boondock touches the key, the party is transported back to the original room. Um, Yay! We did mm -hmm. it by traumatizing Boondock! Yeah, so <laughs> just real quick right here. Um, in your room, what happened was that, like, uh, it was all about trust, and you fucking decided to murder it. Um, yep. And in Boondock's room, you, you solved it with non-violence by just, like, uh, having Boondock confront their fears. Was it at this point where you kind of realized, like, did I solve my room wrong? <laughs> kind No, no, it wasn't this one. I think it was, like, because I didn't really understand what was going on. I was just like, uh -huh. okay, so we have to all do something in each room. I don't know what happened in mine, other than I just beat the crap out of myself, and that's fine. But, um, I just thought, okay, maybe we all have to get over something, and I just got over by beating myself. I don't know. <laughs> I, see, I didn't think I failed at this point. I yeah. thought I failed as soon as we got done with Essen's room. Mm. I was like, oh, everybody had a moment. I did not have that moment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> we get to, to Morgan's room next, um, you, you, Morgan heads in, in first. No, no, yeah, no, you no. shoved him, him in. <laughs> yeah, you shoved him in. <laughs> Morgan didn't really want to go, We everyone shoves him forward. Um, as you guys get to the Morgan room, there's a bridge with a fake Morgan pointing a gun at the party. And the fake Morgan basically says that he doesn't trust anyone to come across the bridge. Um, but, uh, I, I think was it you or Boondock that had the really good idea of like, well, Real Morgan's the same as you, fake Morgan, so if you're both the same person, like, don't you trust yourself? I don't remember, but uh, it was one of us, and it was a good singer. We were like, yeah, take um, that, fake Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is only happening because, like, uh, Juliet and Boondock are both able to speak Sylvan, and these, like, uh, the, the fake doppelgangers are only able to speak that Sylvan. Um, so Juliet's, like, translating for the, for Morgan, um... You want to explain what happened uh, next with the encounter with the fake Morgan? Yeah, so basically the fake Morgan heads over and um, Juliet's just standing on the other end, uh, just, you know, yelling, translating, whatnot. And uh, the fake Morgan asks, like, how, how do you know you can trust them? Like, how, how can you trust anybody? And Morgan's like, well, if they wanted to kill me at this point, they might as well have. But even if they tried, I think they're too dumb enough to do it. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> or something like that. It was so good. <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah. yeah, no. They were betrayed too, and if they were going to backstab me, they would have done it earlier. And if yeah. they didn't, they're just dumb, and I can deal with that. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but at the same time, ow. <laughs> and so the fake Morgan's like, yeah, that makes sense, and hands Morgan a key after saying, like, hey, I'm gonna give you a key, fucking don't shoot me in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan's like, I... Fake Morgan uh, tosses down a key to the real Morgan. Re really, really tempted to make a real. Uh, you guys just like, oh, make a deck save, otherwise the key just falls down into the bottom. <laughs> and we all <laughs> die. The bridge. We're just stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Morgan gets his key. Once again, you're transported back to the original room. Um, two more party members left. Um, and then they realize, uh, oh, it's Essen's turn. And Essen 
is very worried for his room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, because all of us at this point do not know a lot of Essen's backstory at all. And so we were all just kind of like, okay, I guess we're going to finally learn about him. Wrong. We <laughs> learned, well, I mean, we kind of learned something. But you not... did. You just didn't ask any sort of questions about it no, afterwards. No, because we were all freaking out. We were like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? So anyway, <laughs> we go into his room, and it's like this huge, like, room, and the and the the floor is made out of glass, and there's, like, stars and, like, constellations and stuff swimming around. And you ask us, and you are explaining all of this, and, uh, the guy who plays Ellie is like, you really expect Boondock to pay attention to this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> but me and Hops were having fun. We're like, ah, oh, cool, shiny thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I going to explain, like, the, the fake Aston that appears. Um, and you can see, like, the, the fake Essen is, um, kind of, like, a, a slowly approaching you guys. Like, uh, the real Essen decides to try and, like, approach his doppelganger. The fake Essen ignores the real Essen, though, and decides to walk straight up to Juliet, saying uh, how she needs healing. Yeah, um, I was bleeding profusely at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, no, you got beat. <laughs> Your doppelganger also kind of beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and so... <laughs> You you, uh, you look at the uh, fake Essen and you're like, all right, I guess I'll take some healing then. Um, as Essen casts Lay on Hands, um, and as he uses like the Lay on Hands, you are restored back up to full health. And you're like, ah, oh, thanks, dude. Wait, um, hold on, you're missing some funny points. Oh my god, <laughs> so, I forgot about this part. <laughs> basically, the fake Essen's hands start glowing green, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And the real Essen comes over and he's like, oh, it's okay, it's Lay on Hands. And I look at the doppelganger, I'm like. <laughs> Where you laid your hands and he's like oh my god no and I was like, Shh. I'm like I'm gonna win by flustering the shit out of this doppelganger I god <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but the the fake Essen heals you back up to full and uh um you're you're just like oh cool uh sick are we all good for to go for the key then and stuff like that but the fake Essen is like no no you're still hurt I can still heal you um and, and like uh Juliet's still just like uh, uh no I'm good dude like really Hello. we just need the key um as the fake essence getting more like fervent about like healing you and like he heals you for a little bit like more um and you don't gain any health but you can now see it like wounds are starting to form on the fake essence um as the real essence just like realizes that he knows what this is about um because the fake essence has been healing Juliet at the cost of his own energy um so, Essen immediately stops the fake Essen, and uh, just kind of looks at him and says, we don't have to give our everything to feel like we have a purpose in life anymore. And once again, gives this whole dramatic, incredible speech. Um, it, was, it was really very nice. Um, and uh, at the end, the fake Essen is also just like crying into the real Essen's arms, both of them are just crying into each other, as the fake Essen then begins to glow with... Uh, radiant energy as they transform into this incredibly fine paladin armor with two wings coming out from their backs as they envelope the party with this radiant aura and for the first time ever since they got to this creepy ass dungeon um they they just feel like warmth instead of this like desolate uh, oppressive atmosphere mm -hmm. as the party is healed back up to full and Juliet's constitution damage from the time uh, she sacrificed half her life force to Essen is also uh, healed. Yay! I'm no longer as squishy, but I'm still squishy. You're it's still fine. so squishy. Uh, you know what? You know what? I don't want to hear it. I'm at 50 HP now. Yeah, and that'll be great if you can remember to uncanny dodge. You know what? She won't <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You too. I don't want to hear it. Before we descend into fist fighting each other, uh, let's go to the hops room. Um, oh my god, the scariest room ever. Yeah, you want to explain this yes, one? Yes. I was a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so all of us were like, oh, hops' room, it's going to be okay and chill. I mean, we don't really know much about <laughs> hops' backstory, but like, it, it's going to be like, you know, maybe like full of trash or like, you know, shiny things. No. What happens is Hops goes in first, the room goes dark, we all come to, just me, or Juliet, Morgan, Boondock, and Essen are all huddled in this circle, surrounded by a blood rune, 
there's Miasma mm-hmm. all around us with all of these like pillars like covered in blood runes and like blood everywhere and we're like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and we look over and Hops still 11 foot tall by the way like facing a doppelganger Hops so the doppelganger Hops is about to explain the, like the trial that Hops needs to go through but Hops doesn't give a shit she goes so fucking loud <laughs> Yeah, and I was extremely nervous about this room because as soon as like I finished narrating, I was literally like about to start a timer. But then like uh, Hops' player immediately started to ring, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna start the timer during the ring then. Yeah. So basically, um, if you don't know what we're talking about with the ring, uh, some frogs like like to be territorial, and if you need to, please look it up. Just frogs ring. Uh, anyway. So the fake hops explains, I I have a choice for you. You can either choose your friends or, and then they move, and there's like this giant shiny pile of trash. And all of us were like, we're doomed. We're going to die here. <laughs> this is it. Bye, everyone. <laughs> but no, instead, I almost cried. Hops looks over at us, and she's like, no, that's okay, because you guys are my trash. And we were like, ah, <laughs> this is the cutest thing in my life. I've never been so proud to be called trash in my life. Yes. But the door wasn't opening still, and you guys still haven't found the key with 30 seconds to go. Okay, well, you know what? I let You letting me explain this, shush. Anyway, so, um, we didn't know about the timer at all, but you you explained that the miasma was getting close, and we're like, find the key, Hops, find the key! And without a fucking beat, Hops looks at the other, um, the doppelganger Hops, sticks her froggy little hands into the doppelganger's mouth and moves around her cheek pouches and finds the fucking key. Because where else would Hops put this fucking key but in her mouth? (laughs) Oh my god. Yeah, so Hops grabs the the key um, and uh, you guys are once again transported back to that main room. And with all five keys, a new door to the boss room, cough cough, has now been unlocked. Yay! We open the door and the eye eye shits are there, and we're like, "Ha! Fuck you! We did your trials." Yeah, and the eye eye shits are just immediately just like, uh, "Yeah, congratulations! Four of you guys succeeded on the trials. One of you didn't." Yeah, and I was like, "Wait, one of us did it? What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, and there's like your, your idiot friend Juliet over there managed to. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so everyone else yeah. learned something from this experience, um, except for <laughs> Juliet. <laughs> so yeah. the eyes explain, like, um, yeah, so uh, what you guys were supposed to do is every- everyone succeeded on the trials, and you could challenge us, and then maybe, like, uh, you could be let out of this place. Um, but no, because, like, uh, Juliet failed it, that uh, she could never leave. Um, yeah. And so Boondock then had a really good point of, like, wait, I mean, that's kind of bad, ain't it? Like, uh, if we have to abandon one of our friends to, like, uh, to pass your trial here, like, um, isn't that pretty, like, a, a shitty, unjust thing to do? And the fucking eye eye shits immediately snap back with, you really dare to question the laws of this place? As Boondock, very contemplative, because, like, for Boondock, like, laws are kind of everything. Yes. for them uh growing up in this very lawless environment as the sheriff um and as they kind of like immediately kind of look over and just say uh yeah i i think i am and at that the ii I shits immediately start to just like rage um and did boondock say yeah fuck you or something yeah along fuck you yeah so- something along the lines of fuck so you so excited because boondock for one Broke the, well, not broke the rules, but like, you know what I mean? Questioned the rules and uh-huh. swore in front of me. And I was like, I am so proud. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so the I shits immediately start just like screeching. The entire place is just like shaking now. The lights like flickering on and off. Um, as they just kind of like scream out like, fine then. Come, face us, meet your end. Makes no matter to us if you decide to die by our hands or die of a cold uh, and starvation. Um... As the eye eye shits suddenly just like close their eyes and you can't see them in the darkness anymore. And Juliet's just like, well, guess where you gotta go fight them? As Boondock's just having a mild existential crisis and just like, what the hell did I just do? 
I'm so proud. I still am so proud. And mind you, Boondock and Boondock and Juliet are the only two that understood this entire conversation. Everyone mm -hmm. else was like, "What the fuck just happened?" Oh, hey, yeah, we gotta go fight them. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we managed to convince Hops to go back to her normal size because, like, an 11 foot tall Hops is very fucking scary, mind you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Party goes through the door into the boss fight room, and uh, they can see these like two creatures. Um, they appear to be like uh, the, these two humanoid entities that are like uh, seven feet tall each, one black, one white. Um, as they kind of just like float spectrally off the ground, um, and as they um, uh, start attacking the party, they slowly start realizing that, or the party starts to realize that uh, these are probably the stat blocks for some uh, dragons here, as they start to blast the party with some breath weapons and the like. Um, yeah. and, and during the fight, yeah. Juliet gets almost knocked out twice. You know what? Shut <laughs> up, Shiva. We don't have to talk about that part, but you had to. <laughs> um, actually, we kind of do, because the second time you got knocked out, um, Hops also got knocked out with you in this like straight line, and oh, that's um, right. Uh, dude, I, w I was kind of like uh, looking at one of the dragons, and I roll like my d6, and it was a six, which means the dragon's breath weapon recharges. Now, dragon breath weapons, of course, do a lot of burst damage, and with Juliet being insanely squishy and Hops also just being at zero health, um, if the breath weapon decided to attack these two party members both of them would have died. Like, so I gave Boondock one chance, and I said, I need you to make me some kind of, like, uh, attempt then. Because the, this dragon's currently staring down both of your party members, and, like, is about to kill them both in one swoop unless you do something. And Boondock, to their credit, decides uh, they're going to pull the Juliet move, and, um... I, I think they, like, uh, said something about, like, uh, your laws are bullshit or something like that. Something um, like that. Yeah. And Juliet, like, f from the grave as a fucking, like, spirit, just, like, so proud of Boondock. Yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, now Boondock fucking, like, manages to brave the, um, dragon breath, go into Hellwalker form, and take down, uh, one of the dragons. Um, I think Hops manages to, with, like, she, I think she rolled literally one damage, but that one damage was enough to take down the other dragon as it was, like, so low on health. Probably. <laughs> Sounds about yeah. right. Um, as Hops was, like, defeating that last dragon, though, um, yeah, after you, like, get, uh, brought back up, I think you immediately were just like, uh, I want to loot the other the dragon that's, uh, already yeah. killed. Yeah. Yeah, and you were like, are you fucking serious right now? And I was like, well, I can't fucking do anything. I'm trying to disengage, but I also want to see what's oh on the God. dragon. And you're like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, <laughs> the priorities. Yes! <laughs> yes, the priorities. That's a fucking dragon. I can steal some shit, dude. Yeah. So you fucking anyway. decide to search the dragon in the middle of the fight. Yes. And um, <laughs> instead of finding, like, gold or anything like that, what you do end up finding is a tiny little, like, soul that appears to be like a, a black color um and the soul seems to be like trying to like reach out towards the white dragon um and you're very kind of like confused by that because like uh but you managed to just like kind of scoop up the soul because you're a kitsune and you can interact with spirits um and you're just kind of like holding it like still and just kind of like scolding the spirit oh i um, threatened it i was like i swear to god if you pull some more shit i'm gonna squish you right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um he then hops manages to knock uh, the white dragon out um as you can see a white soul emerge from the white dragon and the white soul appears to be reaching out for the black soul um mm -hmm. and i think at this point you kind of realize it's sort of a yin yang thing yeah um, i mean i isabel realized it way early on when yeah. I when you described they were a black and white dragon I was like ah it's yin and yang but I didn't want to say anything and spoil it for everyone so I was like okay mm. cool dragons and then once I got the souls together so I got I picked them up and I was like okay if I put you two together will you chill the fuck out and not kill us and, and, <laughs> and you put them together and they fused an even bigger dragon <laughs> and we all died yeah. <laughs> oh no <laughs> sorry anyway, go ahead 
Yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> I'm yeah. so mad. Yeah, I think at that point, like, you would have just, like, fucking I found out where I live and then just, exactly. yeah. Exactly, it just fucking fell out your ass. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so I put them together, and they started to, like, merge and swirl around each other and, like, make this giant, like, uh, like soul light thing that made the yin yang symbol and it got bigger and bigger so i set it down and ever i was like okay everybody we need to stand back and it created like this blinding light and when we all came to we were looking down at our bodies covered in like this black moss we were in the spirit realm this entire time while our bodies mm -hmm. were like covered in this black moss and so when we went into our bodies and came to we like you know fucking fire blasted all of it out of there and uh, we we're like, what the fuck just yeah. happened? As you guys slowly start to like come to like in your actual bodies, you slowly start to realize that like, um, hops didn't fall down into like this uh, weird uh, ice slide, or sorry, uh, Morgan didn't fall down into the weird ice slide. Morgan was the first person to fall down into this pit of black mold, and then you all tried to rescue Morgan. But then every single one of you also fell into that black mold too, and that's why you got trapped into the spirit realm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So done. you burn away the moss to f and then free all five party members. And as you're kind of looking around, you realize there's another woman who's uh, you freed from the moss too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Essen and I are fr are relatively from the same place. We're both like in the east, right? Yeah, it's it's, yeah. Rel it, it's supposed to be like a, the, the same representation of like Eastern culture in our world. Yeah. Um, and this woman had a kimono on, so both of us were like, holy shit, we need to help her now. So as we're like helping dig this woman out, all of a sudden, she has kitsune ears and, and I started freaking the fuck out. I was like, who is this? Why are they here? What's going on? And as I pressed my forehead to her forehead, I realize this is the goddess of Kitsune, fucking Anario Kami, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Anario Kami fucking comes to, and, like, I think at that point, Juliet, like, didn't you just immediately start to, like, bow or something? Yeah, like... well, okay, so Juliet is a special lady, okay? She doesn't <laughs> pay attention for shit. When it comes to, like, school, because, you know, why the fuck would she want to? Like, that's just boring to her. Why would she want to pay attention? So, like, she yeah. never... My personal head canon is that Juliet's very ADD. Like... Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, so mm. am I, so, like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, she just immediately just goes into a kowtow, which is, like, like the most, like, respectful bow you can go into in, like, uh, Eastern culture. Um, because... She never really paid attention to, like, etiquette. I don't think a lot of people know the etiquette of meeting a goddess. Like, especially your goddess, you know? So, she just immediately goes into a countdown. She's like, I don't know what to do. Oh my god, hi! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, Inario Kami tells you, like, uh, get back up to your feet. Um, as she just kind of says, like, oh yeah, like, um, you don't have to like bow to me or anything like that honestly like uh just just call me uh um uh, like or sorry just like uh address me as you would just like uh, anyone else from the clan um even that uh, she was like uh <laughs> yeah um and yeah and so like uh she's kind of asking like oh like uh what happened and i believe julia at this point said like oh yeah like uh you guys got trapped in like this weird like black moss thing but like we kicked the black moss things as uh, uh. <laughs> and like uh, immediately like, trails off like uh, uncertain if she should swear and Inari Kami's like yeah ass you can swear in front of me if you want yeah. to and I was like oh my god so basically what Juliet was taught was Inari Kami is like the celestial being who is like above all of the kitsune um, you must treat her with the highest respect or she'll like fucking smite you or something and Inari Kami turns out to be pretty fucking chill She's like, yeah, you can call me grandma. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, I'm the first Kitsune, so you're technically my grandchild, so yeah, I'm your grandma. I'm like, I have the fucking coolest grandma ever. Ah. <laughs> yeah, um, but we had this, like, very nice, chill thing of just, like, um, y y y instead of, you got to interact with a Kitsune that, like, you, you really liked, um, 
because like traditionally with, with Juliet's backstory, like she she does not have like the best family back home. So just having like one kitsune that like um you could really get along with, which is probably so nice for her to have. Mm-hmm. Just Julia just needed somebody to look up to because there yeah. isn't <laughs> any Cass. Cass is more of a father figure than somebody to look it up to and it's like be inspired by. Cass isn't that, and Nario Kami mm-hmm. is now that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, but we ended the session uh, with that, I believe. And uh, if we, we're going to have you introduce the Inario Kami to the rest of the party next session. Yes. Um, uh, so with that, thank you for listening to another episode of Phoenix Chat. Um, and a special shout out to our patrons, um, Spicy Turntable, uh, Mod Goth, and Nicole Dreamer, thank you so, so much for supporting us. Uh, you helping us out in this way really just inspires us to keep making more content. Um, if you want to see more from us, we're going to be using our Instagram to try and post more stills from uh, the recaps, um, as well as some extra drawings and the like. And if you want to support us on Patreon, Patreon is also linked in the description. Um, any other closing t- uh, comments, Izzy? <laughs> Nope! Phoenix chat! Yeah!